Now, once you start to try to make this decision, you're going to immediately run into a whole lot of, as it were, opposition in your own soul because it's not a happy conclusion. Okay? To have to say, well, the world is wrong. You're going to want to fight that because you have some moral value in you and because the Bible says you should love your fellow man and it doesn't seem pretty loving to come to these conclusions which are pretty radical and pretty nasty. But every day the proof that these conclusions are right is in front of you. There has never been a Bible movie made which is correct. And obviously the people who made the movie weren't intending to be incorrect. But especially the Christians and the Jews who make their movies alleging to support or glorify God or Moses or Abraham. Well, look how they don't. They can't tell that what they did is an abomination. They really can't. So they're incompetent. Because they're buying into worldly ideas and slapping God's name on them. They have no ability to discern. It's the incompetence and the ideas asserted as being holy that tip you off to the fact that, oh, the world is integrating with itself and putting God's name on it to justify what it wants. And as a result, becomes incompetent. And that's everywhere you look the incompetence at being able to tell good from bad and the utter disdain for trying to know the truth which they don't even recognize as utter disdain because they're incompetent at, dis at discernment it's the incompetence that alerts you century after century, generation after generation, who in his right mind would ever want to believe the tenets of Judaism? You have to be sick, crazy. Who in his right mind would ever want to believe the tenets of Hinduism? You have to be crazy. Who in his right mind would ever want to believe the tenets of Christianity? You have to be crazy. None of those represent the truth. They have some moments and some witty sayings in the interim. They come close to the truth at moments. Very rare. Yeah, it's true Jesus Christ lived. Yeah, it's true he died for your sins. But they have no clue what that means in Christianity. They really don't. It's a five-year-old presentation, a childish kindergarten presentation that's made. Well, as we all know, a kindergarten idea of anything is way off. Lucky if you can say the names rightly. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep that kind of stupidity. I mean, the prayer itself is blasphemous. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Who came up with that line? Oh, but you sound so holy because you're praying to God for something. Uh, hello, aren't, don't you realize you're spitting on God when you say those words? I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He never lost your soul in the first place. He's the one that it's because he says so, you're breathing. So now you're saying that 
that you're going to give your soul that he gave you back to him? Pray the Lord your soul to keep? What? See, it's that kind of insanity. But you can see that kind of insanity in all of them. I'm going to make this world a better place. If I am a good person and I give to charity, the world will be, I'm going to leave the world a better place than when I came into it. Really? Do you know how many people have been fooled by that lie? Century after century. And now you're fooled by it too. So I guess the world really isn't a better place. Because nobody's learned that that's all a great big lie. The world is not better off than it was. It's more tired than it was. That's why we're not fighting with axes like we did 400 years ago. But that's not because we're better. That's because we're more tired. When we stop being tired, we'll fight again. What do you do with all this? Well... You can pray. You can pray that people wake up and smell a coffee. That's about all you can do. You can pray that God caused you to understand. Or you can just go the same way everybody else goes. And become as brute beast as they are. Undiscerning. Herd bound. But before you do that, just notice how incompetent are our claims. How unable we are to actually translate scripture, enact it. Look at how all the things that we claim about God are just made up stuff. We can't even get a Bible documentary right. The Jews can't even get their calendar right. They haven't been able to count time since Josephus and he couldn't count time. Somewhere around 30 AD or so, maybe even before that, the Jews lost the ability to tell time. They don't, they don't even ever get the Passover right. So how come they don't notice? Because they can't. They're too incompetent. And the Christians are no better. The Christians just copied the Jewish inability. Seriously. There was a book by a guy named Moss Hammer. It cost me a hundred bucks called the Easter Computers. You can get it on Amazon. How did they come up with the date of Easter? It's really convoluted. It's totally wrong. It proves that they don't know how to read the Bible to save their lives. But it also proves something worse. They don't even know how to tell time. They decided that Easter should always be on a Sunday. Honey, if it's always on a Sunday, then you're going to miss the date he died. And you're going to miss the date he rose. At least six years out of seven. But the date they come up with the way they calculate which Sunday it is, they always miss both the date of his crucifixion and the date he rose. The closest they've ever come was this last year when they said Easter was supposed to be on the 5th of April. It's always after sundown on the 6th. Almost always. I mean, there's a two-day drift in the vernal equinox. So it's within one or two days of that. This year, the vernal equinox fell on 21st. I did videos on that already. And so he rose at sundown. 18 days. The 18th day, which begins at sundown on the 17th day. After the vernal equinox. Every year, that's when it is. Because Passover every year was the 14th day after the vernal equinox. And it's just a question whether the vernal equinox occurs before or after sundown. What day do you call that? So how come the church fathers and all those hoary heads who had those initials given to themselves 
based on their own incompetence. One incompetent person gives a degree to another incompetent person. So now two, peop two incompetent people have degrees after their name, and they're respectable. But they don't even know how to tell time? The basic unit of time. Hello. If it's Monday in year one, then that same day that's the true anniversary will be Tuesday in year two. So why would you ever insist that Easter always be on a Sunday? You will always miss it. That's what the Easter computers book revealed. The guy who wrote the book didn't know how stupid a calculation it was. He didn't know how to read the Bible either. Moss Hammer can't read the Bible. He's totally incompetent at reading it. And he proves that in his own words. So, you know, you just go read it yourself. And the people came up with the Easter date. It took them like a century of arguing to come up with this date. And the date is completely wrong. And the Jews are always getting Passover wrong every year. Because they're waiting for the new moon to start the month. That's not what the Bible says you should do. The Bible says you should do the opposite. You don't wait for the new moon. It's the 14th day of the month. The month begins and a 30-day schedule except the last month of the year is 35 days. And the last month of the year should be Elul. Because the year started out on the autumnal equinox. With Adam. And it's very easy to restore the true year. Just wait for the autumnal equinox and start it over. Make every, year, every month 30 days. Who cares about a new moon? And then the last month, make it 35 days, 35.25 days. And then every four years, it'll end up being 36 days. But maybe not because the autumnal equinox itself moves. So maybe you don't even need a leap year. God knew what he was doing. God knows how to count. So they're so incompetent, they can't count. So that massive incompetence by so many, once you see it going on century after century, I mean, does nobody wake up and smell the coffee in Christendom and realize, hey, wait a minute, this is a dumb way to try to determine Easter. It'll never be right. It can never be the anniversary of the crucifixion. It'll never be the anniversary of the day he rose because its computation is completely nuts. So then why do we keep on relying on wackos who didn't even know the difference between a high Sabbath and a regular Sabbath in the first place? Why do we rely on them? And why the hell do we call it Good Friday when the Bible says it wasn't? Three days, he rose on the first day of the week. Hello, that means he died on Wednesday. So if you were aiming at a day, then aim on Wednesday. But then you'll still miss the anniversary because that's not how the calendar works. If you're going to have continuous Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then the New Year's day of the week is day plus one versus the old year. Otherwise, you're going to miss the anniversary. So what, in 2,000 years, we've never questioned that in Christendom? That means we hate him. That means we don't care when he died. We care more if we're going for a tradition that spits on him. I'm sorry, honey, if you're celebrating Easter according to the Catholic tradition and you're celebrating Passover according to the Jewish tradition, then you're spitting on God because you don't care to look up in the Bible what's the actual date. Of course, if you get the dates wrong, then how good a Christian are you? How good a Jew are you? Well, but tradition, which gets the dates wrong, is more important than the actual Bible that has the dates in it. Uh oh.
So there you go. Take your pick.